Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I am David. In today's video I'm going to show you roughly how I like to weather my track and my ballast. We've got this nice section here where I relay the crossover, and that's in buff ballast. Okay then, so when it comes to weathering track, um, I use an airbrush, um, but you don't have to, there are a lot of other ways, and if you want to know any of those, um, whether that's using acrylics um, and paint brushes or if that's using powders and stuff like that I'm sure there is plenty of articles and videos out there but today I'm going to go through my methods with the airbrush. The exact way you weather will uh, depend vastly on what era you're modelling, what location you're modelling, even what season you're modelling sometimes. Um, I'm modelling a sort of late summer in the 60s on a branch line in Shropshire so all of those things have led me to how I'm weathering my track at the moment. We've got this nice buff ballast and you can see this is all brand new and fresh. Looking down at the station though, you can see the darker ballast there where it's been toned down quite a bit and nicely weathered. All of this is based on photographs from the real life branch line. Um, just vaguely, just to get the idea of how to do it. Okay, so I've just stopped the trains running so they don't get uh, mucky whilst I'm airbrushing over here. As I was saying, there's no particular method that is entirely correct. I'm just going to show you how I do it and how it works for me. And of course, if, it, if you get a different method you find works for yourself, then that's great. Initially, when I laid all these tracks, it was just bare baseboard. Um, back last year, I think it was, yeah, almost, almost a year ago, it was when I first laid all the tracks. And what I ended up doing is just spraying it all from above with a rattle can of rail match sleeper grime and that's the standard colour that loads of people recommend it's a nice oily dark brown colour and it is actually quite realistic and I just covered all of the track and then wiped off the rail heads and that to begin with gives you quite a good look as I said what I'm going for here is a sort of standard branch line in Shropshire so we're using this buff ballast to represent limestone um, and similar stones that are sort of this yellow colour and what I'm going to be doing is airbrushing the track first and then sort of doing the ballast. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm going to be using my airbrush for this. Now that puts a lot of people off, and it certainly put me off to begin with. I thought airbrushes were sort of an elite tool and they cost a fortune, but they really don't have to. Um, if you want a nice airbrush, yeah sure, it'll be maybe a few hundred pounds, then you'll need a nice compressor and stuff. But I've got this bundle here from Amazon um, last year for £40, £50. Um, I've since changed the airbrush. This airbrush itself costs about £25. And they're just a cheap Chinese kit, really. And it's perfect. It does everything you need to do. It's helped no end with my uh, kit making and weathering and painting. And it's also helped with my track weathering, my building weathering, my loco weathering. All for like 50 quid so I think it's well worth it obviously again if you want a nice one you will be paying a little bit more but I'm perfectly happy with this okay so this is going to be slightly different to how I initially went the track um, to start with obviously it's already ballasted so I can't just coat the whole area in brown I'll have to be a bit more careful secondly I don't have any rail match paint but that's not a problem um, you can mix your own paints however you like them what I'm going to be using is Vallejo Model Air Dark Earth. It's just a nice dark brown. I've got a few, I've got dark grey, matte black, a lighter brown, this is a medium brown apparently. You can just mix and match whatever you like. I've even got some sand primer, that might come in useful at some point. And all I really do is just throw paint on the track and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've mixed in a tiny bit of grey and I'm happy with the colour. So what I'm going to do now, obviously if there was no ballast or anything here, I would just cover the whole area in a nice dark brown and that blends the sleepers in with the track. Obviously because all the scenery's here I'm going to be a bit more careful. So I'm just going to go along the sides of all of the rails and just try and get this brown on the rails only. Okay, so I've got the first coat on the rails there. That's using a mixture of um, 
this Vallejo Dark Earth and some grey and black and stuff all just mixed together in the cup of the airbrush. Again, normally this would be sleeper grime, but I don't have any sleeper grime handy, so it's just a slightly different colour. And hopefully I'll be able to sort of blend it in with the rest of the layout. I'm going to leave these uh, coats to dry for a little bit. Then I might need a few touch-up areas on some fish plates and things that haven't taken paint so well. And then we'll get on and sort of blend it in, blend it into the ballast as well. Okay then, so I'm pretty happy with all the rails now. Uh, all the places that needed it have had two coats, they've had a little touch up. And the uh, brown paint I was using has dried a bit darker, so it blends really well now. The next stage then really is to weather the ballast. So when you do the rails, you get some nice natural overspray onto the ballast. Um, but then what I like to do is follow up and actually do a light, light coat of weathering all over the rest of the ballast. Okay, so we're making really good progress. So I've been spraying the ballast now with a mix of brown as normal and grey just to get that sort of sleeper grimy colour and then coming back with, you know, runs of pure dark grey and runs of pure light brown, just mixing things up really. Um, I've been working quite hard to try and hide the seams. You can still see a bit of one here. I might go over that in a minute um, just to blend it in a little more. But no, I'm really happy with how this is coming out at the moment. The final stage then, once I've done all my greys and browns and stuff, and I've got the ballast looking dirty um, to the level I want it, this area is quite dark because it's got a lot of point work, so there'd be a lot of um, you know grease and stuff on mechanisms that then attracts dirt and makes it even muckier. What I then like to think about is where would locos be standing in this area? And again, where would they drag grease and oil and stuff around off of point work and, and um, point locks and stuff? And then I come back with just pure black. Okay then, so what I'm going to do, I've got the pure black. I'm going to start by blending the coal siding back into the rest of the ballast. Okay, I'm now going to add a few streaks around the tracks where there might have been some um, coal dropped, or ash, or perhaps some oil dragged along or grease from the point work. So, Okay, so I've got a lot of black splodges in now where there's oil or grease or coal or whatever. A lot of that might seem extreme to begin with, um, but once it sort of dries, it will turn it down a little bit when it's not uh, shiny black paint. So what I'm going to do is leave it to dry again. I'm going to clean the rail heads and just come along and see how it looks, um, maybe in half an hour to an hour or so. And then if there's any areas I want to change, I've got all the paints, I can just... Uh, add a little more on top. The key thing is not to go too far at the beginning. I've had to use quite a lot of paint here to sort of blend in the old ballast with the new ballast and I think it's gone quite well. You can really, uh, it's kind of hard to see the joins now. If this is just normal track, less is more sometimes. Again, depending on where you're modelling and uh, whether there'd be locos standing there, whether there's a lot of point work which attracts dirt or um, if it's just a nice normal bit of mainline track. Okay, so it is a few hours later now. Uh, we're in the evening. I've just quickly gone over some of the darker areas with a light brown just to uh, reduce the contrast a tiny bit. This whole area is a bit grubbier um, as it's got a lot of point work in it which might have grease or other lubricants and things and uh, signal wires and stuff that all attract dirt um, out out in the open air so it is a little darker 
But no, I am quite quite happy with how this has come out. And it certainly blends in the uh, new ballast with the old. Okay guys, it's Editing David here. Um, as you should know, if you've seen the little update I put up yesterday, I am at uni now, um, and I didn't quite get round to finishing everything I wanted to do before I left. Um, as you can see, I've obviously finished the weathering of this crossover here, or the new track. I didn't quite get round to weathering the grey ballast on the incline, so you'll see that at a future date when I'm home for the summer probably. And I didn't get a head start on weathering the unballasted track in the works area. What I thought I'd do is just go through now a quick sort of um, picture summary because you can see the stark contrast. So we start off here with the uh, plain buff ballast and it's really really bright. Um, all of my track looked like this at one point or another. And then the first stage was to put that nice dark brown colour just trying to get it on the rails and the rails only. Obviously on the point work you have to sort of fire it down into the frogs and the flanges and the check rails and everything. So you do end up with a little more paint on the ballast in those areas. Um, again you could use rail match for this, sleeper grime, that's what I used to use, what I normally use. But for the purpose of uh, this weathering I used a mix of Vallejo air paints, I used a dark brown and a dark grey sort of mixed together. So the next stage then was to sort of cover over um, a lot of the ballast work with a sort of browny colour. You can use sleeper grime again if you want or go for a different colour. I also followed that up I believe with a little bit of grey just dusting over the sleepers. And then you go round and you sort of find any areas where there'd be grease or oil or diesel or coal or ash and then you pick those out with a black paint or in case of ash you can use some white or light grey. Here I've just used a lot of black to sort of blend in the, where the coal siding, which is covered in coal, meets the running line there, and sort of adding areas of darkness um, before signals, just off screen. I had to weather in before a signal, um, where there'd obviously be trains waiting, so they'd be dumping ash all over the place, um, making a mess. And yeah, so that's about it. Just a quick video really to show you how I weather my track because a lot of people have seemed interested both um, on YouTube here and on Iron Web. It's basically just a mix of different browns and greys and blacks with the airbrush. I will be sort of coming on to this again at some point with my uni layout. Um, hopefully I can start the series of that maybe tomorrow if I get enough videos edited. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.